Hello, today I'm going to talk about one of WPF's key features, and that is binding. You may have seen this word when you worked with a data grid in Windows Forms. Do you remember that miracle when you clicked a cell in the data grid, and the text boxes showed you the data from the line? Well, in WPF, binding is a powerful programming tool used all the time. Actually, you can build WPF programs even without it. But believe me, the thing will save you a lot of time and lines of code. Binding implies the use of two objects, a source and a receiver. The receiver binds to a certain property of the source. If that property of the source changes, the receiver will know about it automatically. For example, you can bind the text property of a text block to the text property of a text box. In this example, the text box will be defined as usual. But the text block needs a special expression in its text property. The most basic format is as follows. An opening curly brace, type binding, white space, element name equals the name of the source, comma, white space, path equals the property of the source, and a closing curly brace. Now, if we type in the text box, the text of the text block changes as well. So, binding is a class which has its own properties. We have already used two of them, element name and path. There are other properties like mode, relative source, source, and so on. The mode property can be set to one way, which means that the property of the receiver changes after the source property changes. It can be set to one time, then the receiver property is set to the source property only once, and does not track the source afterwards. Mode can be set to two way when both the source and the target can affect each other. It can be set to one way to source, which means that only the receiver changes the source. And finally default. It means two way for text box text, but one way for everything else. When you set one way, changes are immediate. But when you have two way or one way to source, Changes take place only after the text box loses its focus. This behavior is decided by the update source trigger property of binding. It can take one of four values. Property changed means the source gets updated right after the receiver. Lost focus means that the source will be updated after the receiver is updated. Explicit implies calling a binding expression from code. And default, which is property changed for most properties, but lost focus for text box text. In case the bound property is not set, you can use the target null value property of binding to show some default value. This is the case when you bind to null public properties in c -sharp code.
Binding can also work even with controls without a name by using the relative source property. And again, you use the same name object relative source and set its mode property. Here mode can be self or find ancestor. The letter binds to the property of the container. Let's bind textbox text to its background property. So while I'm typing, I think you already understand how much code you would write in C sharp for doing such a little thing. The biggest headaches in C sharp I can think of are probably handling all types of possible exceptions and maybe conversion. And let's bind to the grid property inside which the text box is placed. If we use find ancestor, we also must specify ancestor type. Again in curly braces. You can also bind to public properties in your c -sharp code, but this is a little out of scope, since here I try to concentrate only on XAML. Well, that's it for binding basics. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful day! Mm -hmm.